Hello Internet! Today we are going to discuss the meaning of the plus sign in quantum mechanics, also with respect to the unfortunate cat. Since 1926, quantum mechanics forms the basis of our physical understanding. Nevertheless, there are many misunderstandings and wrong statements about quantum mechanics up to this day. Some of these misunderstandings revolve around the interpretation of this plus sign and that's why I want to talk about it today. Quantum mechanics is not an extension of classical physics as it was known before 1926. Instead, quantum mechanics introduces a disruptive change that puts our physical worldview on a new footing. Quantum mechanics may be understood as an extension of probability theory that is applied to our observation of the physical world. In many, but not in all cases, the old predictions of classical physics emerge as approximations to the exact quantum mechanical predictions. We will now use an example to demonstrate in which sense quantum mechanics extends probability theory. Let's imagine a fair six-sided die like this one. We put the die into a box and shake it thoroughly without looking at the die in between. Using probability theory, we can make a statement about what we expect to see when we look at the die again. The probability that the die shows a 1 will be 1 sixth. The probability that the die shows a 2 will also be a sixth and so on. We expect the die to show a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6, all with equal probability. I'd like to contrast this with the interpretation of a particular quantum state. A state in quantum mechanics summarizes the knowledge we got from observing a complete set of observable quantities. In our example, we put the die into the box such that the 1 is on top. In this idealized system, this constitutes an observation of a complete set of observables, in our case only the number on the die. We express our knowledge in form of the quantum state 1. The vertical line and the angle are part of the symbol. Together with the label in between, they form a so-called cat symbol indicating a specific quantum state. We now shake the box without observing the die in between. If we know everything about the system and about the forces acting on it, quantum mechanics allows us in theory to translate our initial knowledge throughout these actions into the future. Doing this we neither gain nor lose knowledge and therefore our knowledge about this later time is also represented by a state. Let's assume for the sake of the explanation that our calculations yield the following state after shaking. 1 over square root of 6 times state 1 plus 1 over square root of 6 times state 2 plus and so on. First of all, this is indeed a state because according to a fundamental property of quantum mechanics, such weighted sums of states are themselves states. Mathematically, these states are elements of a vector space which can be added together and can be multiplied by complex numbers. But what is the physical meaning of these plus signs and of these numbers? The numbers are called amplitudes and quantum mechanics teaches us that the square of the absolute value of an amplitude is the probability to observe the corresponding result. This amplitude of 1 over square root of 6 tells us that the probability is 1 sixth to observe a 1 on the die. Likewise, this amplitude tells us that there is a probability of 1 sixth to observe a 2, and so on. The plus signs should be understood as OR disjunctions between alternative possibilities. The addition of alternative possibilities 
is not a new idea of quantum mechanics. It is, in fact, a well-known idea of probability theory, where one adds the probabilities of alternative events contributing to an outcome. For example, if we want to know the probability of rolling an odd number, namely a 1 or a 3 or a 5, we need to add the probabilities corresponding to those numbers. 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth is a half. It is crucial to note, however, that in the quantum mechanical formula we are not adding probabilities, we are adding state vectors weighted by amplitudes. We will later discuss the consequences of this important difference. This example also shows that quantum mechanics is a non-deterministic physical theory. Although we had complete knowledge of the initial state and the external forces, the theory does not predict a single certain outcome, but instead it yields the probabilities to observe multiple alternative outcomes. According to this state, we expect to see a 1 or a 2 or a 3 and so on on the die, all with probability 1 sixth. This quantum state therefore implies the probability theoretical statement above. Now the question is, is this state identical to the probability theoretical statement? The answer is no. This state contains further information that is not reflected in the probabilities to observe particular numbers on the die. The mathematical foundation for this is that the amplitudes in quantum mechanics are complex numbers. A complex number is defined not only by its absolute value, which here corresponds to the probability, but it also has a phase, which can be visualized as an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. For our first example state, I have set all the phases to 0 degrees, making the amplitudes positive real numbers. Instead of plus 1 over square root of 6, we could, however, also have gotten an amplitude of minus 1 over square root of 6, or i, the imaginary unit, over square root of 6 corresponding to phases of 180 and 90 degrees, respectively. A uniform shift of all the phases across all the amplitudes has no physical significance. A change of relative phase, however, is significant and leads to a different physical state. Still, these states, which differ only in the relative phases of their amplitudes, make the same predictions about probabilities to observe numbers on the die. Both of them tell us that we expect each number with the same probability. Where can we find the physical differences between these different states? The salient point is that there have to be other observable quantities besides the number on the die. Quantities that we can observe instead of the number on the die, but not simultaneously with it. One says that such quantities are complementary to the number on the die. A state in which the predicted number on the die is uncertain, because the amplitudes for multiple numbers are non-zero, always contains, in form of the relative phases, certain knowledge about complementary observables that can be observed instead of the number on the die. What would be an example of such a complementary quantity? For reasons we will discuss later, I cannot come up with a good example for the die. We will therefore switch to an even simpler system for the rest of this video. We will flip a coin. A complete observation will tell us whether the head of the coin is up or down. The system therefore has two distinguishable states, up and down. Actually, our coin shall be an electron, the spin of which we will measure along the c-axis. Such a measurement has two possible results. The spin can be either up 
or down along the z-axis, meaning that the z-component of the spin is either plus h-bar over 2 or minus h-bar over 2. At the beginning, we prepare the electron in state up. We then let a magnetic field act on the electron without observing the spin in the meantime. The action of the magnetic field corresponds to the shaking of the box in our early example, but it is much more uniform and far easier to control. If we precisely know the strength of the magnetic field and the duration of its interaction with the electron, we can use quantum mechanical formulae to calculate the state of the electron after the interaction. Let's assume we choose all parameters in such a way that we end up with the following final state. 1 over square root of 2 times state up plus 1 over square root of 2 times state down. We already know the probability theoretical interpretation of this. The spin will now be up or down when we observe it along the z-axis. By squaring the absolute values of the amplitudes, we find that the probability of getting either up or down is one half each. The magnetic field has therefore flipped the spin with a probability of 50%, if you will. However, our final state contains more information than this 50-50 statement. And in this case, we can precisely state what this information is about. The quantities complementary to the spin component along the z-axis are the spin components along the x-axis and along the y-axis. Actually, we can consider arbitrary directions, but the complementarity will be most pronounced when we look at axes that are perpendicular to each other. In any case, we can only observe the spin component along a single chosen direction at any particular time. To better understand the relations of the corresponding states, we must venture a little deeper into the mathematics of states. The states up and down, which we write using these cat symbols, form a basis of the space of states. This means that we can write any arbitrary state psi uniquely as a weighted sum of up and down using complex amplitudes. We now introduce new symbols called bras, one each for up and down. These bras constitute a basis of the dual vector space, dual to the up and down cats. This simply means that we can pair any bra vector with any cat vector and that the following equations hold. Up with up is 1, up with down is 0, down with up is 0, and down with down is 1. These definitions are continued linearly to general bra and cat vectors. In order to interpret these equations physically, we consider the cats to represent knowledge about the state of the system and the bras to represent questions about what we are going to observe. A pairing of two states A and B as bracket A with B gives us the amplitude to observe A given that we know B. The probability can be calculated according to Born's rule. The probability to observe A, given that we know B, is the square of the absolute value of the amplitude bracket A with B. We find that the probability to observe the spin as up along the z-axis when we know it to be down along the z-axis is absolute value of up with down squared is zero. The same is true in the opposite direction. This means that the states up and down can be distinguished with certainty. In contrast, the probability to observe the spin as up along the z-axis when we know it to be up along the z-axis is absolute value of up with up squared is 1, meaning 100%. This justifies that we interpret the state up to represent certain knowledge about the spin being up along the z-axis. 
Let's look again at the state of the electron after the action of the magnetic field. And let's call this state L. We also define a state R, which differs from L only by the relative phases of the up and down components. These states also have the corresponding bras. The only thing to be careful about is that we must take complex conjugates of the amplitudes when going from cat to bra. As we are using real numbers, in this example it makes no difference. We can easily invert these equations in order to express up and down in terms of L and R. And we may begin to see some symmetry between these respective sets of states. In fact, when we calculate the pairings of brass and cats, we find that the equations for L and R take exactly the same form as those for up and down. L with L is 1, L with R is 0, R with L is 0 and R with R is 1. This is because, like up and down, the states L and R form a basis of distinguishable states for the whole space of states. This LR basis is equivalent to the up-down basis for describing the spin of the electron. What is the physical meaning of the states L and R? It turns out that just as up and down correspond to a known C component of the electron spin, L and R correspond to a known X component of the electron spin. For state L, we know that the X component of the spin is plus h bar over 2. For state R, we know that the x component of the spin is minus h bar over 2. From the definitions of L and R, we see that if we know the x component of the spin, we will find the c component of the spin to be either up or down with a probability of 50% each. That is, if the x component of the spin is known, the C component is completely uncertain. Knowing the X component is complementary to knowing the C component. At any time we can either know one or the other. Vice versa, if we know the C component of the spin to be up, the X component of the spin is unknown, with a 50% chance of being positive, state L, and a 50% chance of being negative, state R. The alert viewer may have spotted a puzzling point. According to the usual rules of probability theory, our knowledge of the electron spin seems to be inconsistent. If we know the electron to be in state L with 100% certainty, we have probabilities of 50% up and 50% down. 50% up and 50% down, in turn, each mean we expect 25% L and 25% R. Overall, we conclude according to probability theory that knowing L with 100% certainty is equivalent to having 50% probability for L and 50% probability for R, a contradiction. However, this problem does not arise if we follow the rules of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics demands that we express the mutual relationships of states not in terms of probabilities, but in terms of probability amplitudes. It is the amplitudes that we must multiply and add in the proper calculation. Doing so, we find something remarkable. On the blackboard, we see the proper quantum mechanical calculation. The R terms have cancelled each other due to their opposite phases. The L terms, instead, have reinforced each other due to the addition of equal phases, giving us a consistent result. This cancelling and reinforcing of amplitudes based on their relative phases is known as destructive and constructive interference, respectively. Interference of amplitudes is the core difference that sets quantum mechanics apart from the usual calculus of probabilities and that makes the plus in quantum mechanics so much more interesting than the usual OR disjunction in probability theory. Only interference of amplitudes enables the perfect symmetry 
we found between states of known spin with respect to the c-axis and the x-axis respectively. Analogous relationships hold for states of a known y-component of the spin. And indeed, we can find corresponding states for any direction. Overall, this simple system, with only two states being distinguishable at the time, carries a beautiful realization of the full rotational symmetry of three-dimensional space, which treats all directions on the same footing. The beauty of quantum mechanics is that it can realize such large continuous symmetries with only a small number of discrete distinguishable states. This combination of a few simple states and high symmetry is at the basis of many crucial properties of the physical world, like the stability of atoms or the regularities we find in the periodic system of elements. Note that there cannot be any interference between distinguishable states. This is because distinguishable states are mathematically orthogonal to each other in the abstract vector space of states. For orthogonal directions, the theorem of Pythagoras holds, even in this abstract setting. The squared lengths along mutually orthogonal directions add up to the squared length of the vector sum. In this context, Pythagoras' theorem is simply the statement that the probabilities of distinguishable alternative events are summed over. In this way, quantum mechanics contains an elegant abstractly geometrical extension of probability theory, which, in case of orthogonal, that is, distinguishable states, reduces to the usual calculus of probabilities. As we saw, a state in quantum mechanics can contain more information than is reflected in the probabilities with respect to a single chosen basis of distinguishable states. Given any state, one can in fact find a basis with respect to which this state predicts a complete set of simultaneously observable quantities with certainty. In this sense, a state, also called a pure state, constitutes maximal knowledge about the physical system. In practice, it is impossible to gain such a maximal degree of knowledge about the physical system. Pure states are an idealization. How does quantum mechanics deal with the typical case of incomplete knowledge? In the beginning, I claimed that quantum mechanics could be understood as an extension to probability theory. Probability theory is very good at reasoning about incomplete knowledge. Can quantum mechanics represent such incomplete knowledge too? The answer is yes, but not by a pure state. There is a tool called the quantum mechanical density matrix, which allows us to represent the whole bandwidth from a complete lack of knowledge up to the maximal certainty of a pure state. Unfortunately, it would go beyond the scope of this video to discuss the details. Using the density matrix, one can also model the gradual loss of knowledge that occurs due to incomplete observation of the system's interactions with the outside world. This loss of knowledge is called decoherence. Treating the example of the die in the box more carefully in this way we would need to take into account that due to thermal and gravitational interactions, due to sound waves, but also due to the incomplete control over the forces acting on the box, our knowledge about the state of the die would continuously degrade. After only a short time, the relative phases in the quantum mechanical description will become unknown and instead of a pure state, we would have to use a density matrix similar to this one. This density matrix is truly equivalent to the probability theoretical statement above, corroborating my initial claim that quantum mechanics is a true extension of probability theory. Decoherence is the reason that we cannot find realistic examples of mutually complementary quantities in macroscopic systems. The experimental realization of these 
Macroscopic complementary measurements is simply infeasible. To summarize, the plus between quantum states can be understood as a logical OR, keeping in mind that the relative phases of the states being added play an important role. The infamous state 1 over square root of 2 alive plus 1 over square root of 2 dead of Schrödinger's abused pet therefore does not mean at all that the cat would be alive and dead at the same time. Instead it means that we know the cat to be alive or dead with equal probability and that furthermore we have certain knowledge about an observable quantity that is complementary to the aliveness of the cat. As we already discussed for the die, such a high degree of knowledge about a macroscopic system is highly implausible and a realistic cat in a box would rather have to be described by a density matrix similar to this one. Because due to the unknown interactions of the cat with its environment, we are bound to lose all knowledge about the relative phases between macroscopically distinguishable states and thereby about complementary observables in a very short time. I want to emphasize that decoherence does not turn quantum mechanics into a deterministic theory. For an unobserved cat, the probability that it is alive may very well be around 50% as it is according to this density matrix. At this point you know that Schrödinger's cat is not only the most misunderstood pet on the planet, it is also a bad example for explaining quantum mechanics because precisely the most important innovations of quantum mechanics compared to probability theory, namely interference of amplitudes and complementarity of observables, are not exhibited in this case. Therefore, please use an electron for your next Gedankenexperiment and leave the poor cat alone. Are the statements of this video a matter of interpretation? No, because quantum mechanics tells us directly that the system cannot be in two distinguishable states at the same time. The equation bracket alive with dead equals zero means that the probability to observe a cat that we know to be dead as alive is zero percent. These states are distinguishable and their simultaneous realization is therefore impossible. There is no room for interpretation here. Claims that the cat would be dead and alive at the same time are simply wrong. If you have any questions about this video, please post them in the comments below. I will either answer them there or make a follow-up video with questions and answers. If you liked the video, please share it, so we can all work together to somewhat reduce the confusion surrounding quantum mechanics. Thank you.